Hey, yeah, you, wearing the socks. What's up? Welcome back to another episode of Freaky Friday. My name is Brendan Taylor and I'm your host. If you have no idea who I am, that's most of the world. Hit the subscribe button right now, turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. 2019's a big year and we gotta start it right with a great Freaky Friday case. If you have no idea what Freaky Friday is, every Friday I talk about a case that is freaky, paranormal, scary, unsolved. You know the drill. Every Friday we're talking about a case. So today's case is actually quite disturbing, all right? So we need to go back in time a little bit to October 22nd, 1989 at around 9 p.m. to be exact. Three young boys were riding home from a convenience store where they went to rent a movie. Okay, it was Aaron, Jacob, and Trevor. They were all 10 and 11 years old, just wanted to get a movie so they can go home and watch. When the unthinkable happened, a man walked out of the driveway with a cap on and a gun and he ordered all the boys to get off their bikes, put their bikes in a ditch, and lay face down in this ditch. So already when this is happening, I can only imagine what these kids are going through. They're literally 10 and 11 years old, right? Like what do you even think at this point in your life? Because you can't even imagine something like this happening. Like you don't think about that at 10 years old, you know what I mean? So the youngest boy there was Trevor. This was Jacob's brother. He was 10 years old, and immediately he was told to run off. Run off in the distance, don't look back, or he'll be shot. So what did Trevor do? He ran and he didn't look back. The man then demanded the boys turn around so that he can view both of their faces. He decided to choose Jacob and let Aaron go. He told Aaron the same thing that he told Trevor. He said, run, if you look back, you're getting shot. So what did Aaron do? He ran and he didn't look back. And this was the last time that Jacob was ever seen alive. But something really weird about this whole case is that 10 months prior to the murder and disappearance of Jacob Wetterling, a similar incident happened to a 12 year old boy named Jared Sherrill. He was abducted, sexually assaulted, physically threatened by a man welding a gun who was later identified as Danny Heinrich, okay? So I'm gonna get more into this Danny guy. Danny guy is the actual murderer of Jacob Wetterling who actually managed to escape being caught for 30 years. Yes, this case was just recently solved in 2016. This man literally murdered an 11 year old boy raped him, assaulted him, murdered him. His family never got a proper funeral just because this sick, sick individual was able to hide his tracks. And I don't know how this is possible nowadays, especially, I feel like this stuff could never happen, but it's literally happening right under our noses. So the reason we know that these two cases are tied together was because of the same saying that he said to all the other boys. He said, as he let Jared go, he said, run. And if you look back, I will shoot you. I mean, th this has to be so terrifying to hear. Imagine being a 10 to 12 year old boy and a man putting a gun to you and saying, run, if you look back, I will shoot you. I know you're probably gonna be like, I wanna look back and see if my friend's okay, but at the same time, I don't wanna get shot. So in a situation like that, if it ever happens, God forbid, run in zigzags because it's gonna be a lot harder for someone to hit you with a bullet if you're running in zigzags. I don't know why I'm giving you this information. You never know. If it ever happens, now we're ready. You know what I mean? So in May 2014, investigators confirmed that they were taking another look at the series of attempted and actual child molestations that had occurred in Painesville area in the two years preceding to the Wetterland abduction and murder. Between the summer of 1986 and spring 1987, five teenage boys were attacked. Investigators believe that these attacks were not random that they all could have been connected to the Wetterling abduction and murder that happened just 40 minutes away. So all these, these attacks on young boys are happening within this year span in Painesville and they, they couldn't catch a single person. So somehow this guy, Danny Heinrich, disgusting human, was slipping under the radar, attacking, assaulting children and getting away with it. He literally got away with it for 30 years. I don't understand, man. So this is where we're getting some information about Danny Heinrich, all right? So in October of 2015, which is just over three years ago, they finally got a person of interest, and that is Danny James Heinrich. He was publicly named in the disappearance of Wetterling, right? So now everyone knows, 30 years later, this is the man who abducted an 11-year-old, raped him, murdered him, and buried his remains. He had been questioned by the FBI on December 16, 1989, and a DNA sample was taken, but he was not charged with a crime and was released. So literally, they had the guy who committed this crime. Two months later, they had him. They were questioning him, but somehow he managed to finesse the system and not be tied to this murder. Like, how sick of a human can you be that you just murdered a kid and you played it so straight faced, so chilled, that the FBI had no idea that they were literally talking to a murderer rapist. It, it just doesn't make sense how these 
sick people live in this world. So Heinrich's DNA was actually matched to the abduction of Jared, right? But since this happened in 1989, by the time they matched this in 2015, they could not hold him against this crime because the statute of limitations. So if you have no idea what that is, it basically means that if you commit a crime over 10 years ago and you aren't charged, you cannot be charged for that crime anymore. It's very weird. Like hypothetically speaking, I killed someone and I got away with it for 20 years, you can't try to charge me 20 years from now for that crime because the statute of limitations are up. So dumb. This is the world we live in. This is America. However, a search warrant was granted. FBI and investigators rolled up to Heinrich's home and they found child pornography. So ultimately, this is what got him arrested. Not the murder, not the abduction, not the sexual assault of children, but child pornography is what got him locked up ultimately on October 28, 2015. So now Heinrich is in custody. There's nothing else that he can do but confess, right? Now there's these things called plea deals where he can get lower sentencing if he like admits to his own crimes and such like that. So that's what happens now. Heinrich decided to cooperate with authorities as part of a plea bargain and on September 1st, 2016, led investigators to a burial site. Jacob's clothing and human remains were unearthed from a pasture near Painesville, about 30 miles away from Wetterling's home and abduction site. And it was just a short distance from where Heinrich was living. So he was fine living just miles away from where he murdered and buried a child. On September 3rd, the remains were confirmed as Jacob by dental record, and Jacob's mother, Patty, actually went on the news and did indeed confirm that this was her child, and it was absolutely heartbreaking. I'll play footage of that right now. I wanna say, Jacob, I'm so sorry. It's incredibly painful to know his last days, last hours, last minutes. I would, I would love to talk to you all, I'm just not ready yet because for us jacob was alive until we found until we found him it's completely heartbreaking when a parent has to bury their child especially when their child's remains aren't even there to be buried because some sick man buried your child on his own in his backyard basically imagine putting yourself in patty's shoes not knowing where your child's remains are for 30 years for 30 years not knowing maybe your son is alive because they never found him. It must have been just an overwhelming amount of emotions flowing through her again. But back to the case. In the plea agreement, Heinrich agreed to plead guilty to one count of the 25 federal child pornography charges brought against him. In addition to revealing the location of the body and pleading guilty, he also agreed to testify as to the details of the Wetterling crime. So Heinrich testified that he kidnapped and handcuffed the boy, drove him to this gravel pit where he molested, killed, and buried his body. Heinrich also said that he was able to avoid the police that night because he had a police scanner and he was listening on. So basically, the police officers were talking about the crime that he committed and they were saying like where they're at in the case and he was just avoiding the whole situation, which is a sick, thought out, premeditated crime if you think about it, because this man had a police scanner in the back of his car so that he can listen and know how to get away with this crime before he committed the crime. He said that he came back to the site a year later and moved the body after noticing that Wetterland's jacket had become exposed. This, I cannot believe this, okay? A year later, he goes back and sees part of this boy's clothing sticking out of the ground and managed to unearth the boy and rebury him without anyone catching on. How does this happen? I mean, I've never been to Painesville, Minnesota, but how does this happen? I don't get it. During the court hearing, Heinrich also admitted to that earlier crime of molesting and sexually assaulting Jared Sherrill earlier that year. Okay, so this, this next part is what really kind of like gets under my skin because this man ultimately got away with murder, all right? So in exchange for, you know, the plea deal and admitting to all this stuff, he was charged with the maximum amount of time for child pornography only and that was 20 years so this man raped murdered assaulted kidnapped buried and ruined ultimately families lives and all he got was 20 years for owning child pornography is the justice system messed up should this statute of limitations be a thing like this guy clearly admitted to this crime but because we have these laws that we have, he cannot be charged with that crime. Even though he physically said, verbally out of his mouth, that he committed this crime 
he can't be tied to it because it's statute of limitations. So dumb, so dumb. And I wanna know now, with this all being said, like 30 years go by and now he's finally being arrested, which you know what? <laughs> Round of applause because he was arrested and he didn't get away with this crime. But what are your guys' thoughts? Like, think about this, man. I know this is messed up to think about, but like just think about it for a second. Imagine this happened to one of your family members. Someone killed your family member and you have no idea who it was for 30 years. And then 30 years goes by, they finally have a lead on who did this. And the man admits to doing it, but doesn't get charged for that crime. Gets charged for a completely different crime. How would you feel about that? Do you feel that this system is messed up? What do you think in the comments below? Because I wanna know. So even the judge knew that this was messed up because of the statute of limitations and him not being able to be charged for this crime, that the judge actually made this statement. We won't pretend this crime and sentence is about child pornography. It is also about changing the lives of so many children and parents who prayed for Jacob's return and also feared you coming out of the dark. Every child knows the story of Jacob Wetterling. You stole the innocence of children in small towns, in the cities of Minnesota and beyond. Although Heinrich could potentially be released in 17 years, the judge basically said that no matter what, when you are released or if you're not ever released, your crime was so brutal, so heinous, that society will never let you go free. So everyone is gonna know this man's face. And if you don't know this man's face, here it is again, just so you can see it. This is the face of a disgusting, awful human being. But with that being said, if you enjoyed this Freaky Friday episode, please smash the thumbs up button. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell so you don't ever miss a post. Go stream my music, all right guys? Hit up Spotify, look me up, it's just Brennan. You can find my songs on there, you can listen. I got some fire bangers coming out. Also, if you haven't gotten any merch, brennantaylor.com, always putting up new stuff. And I love you guys so much and I wanna leave you guys with one question because that's what I always like to do. If you were put in a position like Jacob and this man came to you with a gun, even if it was loaded or not, you don't know this. What do you do? Do you listen and get into the car with him? Do you run and maybe get shot? I wanna know what you guys would honestly do in a situation like that. Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, I'll see you guys on Monday. Peace out. Make sure you guys check out yesterday's video and also make sure you hit that subscribe button right now and turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. Follow me on my other social medias and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.